I have been around microphones most of my life. Uh, growing up, my parents had some recordings of uh, stuff they did in the past, and they had a, a dynamic microphone, a stage mic, and a tape recorder. A uh, pretty massive one, actually. It looked like a small amplifier. And it was literally tape to tape and cassettes, and it was pretty simple stuff, very primitive compared to what we have today. Uh, but consider the times. I mean, back then, back in the late 80s, early 90s, you didn't, you, digital wasn't a thing. Well, it wasn't a big thing. It was expensive and no one wanted to deal with it because you could barely record anything. There was no space. But microphones, on the other hand, have not changed that much over the years. You have your microphone type, dynamic, or the type is called the transducer, is also known as. So a condenser, dynamic, ribbon, they're all types of transducers, basically converting acoustic audio to an electrical sig signal onto your recorder, whatever it is, it's basically a long chain, not a long chain, but a chain of conversions to make sound hearable or audible, is that the word? Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we are going to be talking about dynamic microphones, what makes them unique, why haven't they changed over the years, and we're gonna break one down physically and give you a little bit of insight of what's inside of this microphone. What's this microphone type? Transducer, very fun word. Before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, leave it down in the comments section down below. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, or whatever it is, leave a like. It would be greatly appreciated, and consider subscribing. What makes a dynamic microphone unique? And compared to condenser microphones, ribbon microphones, shotgun microphones, whatever it is, what differentiates them from the other ones? Well, first off, they have a low sensitivity to sound, meaning that they won't pick up background noise as much as the other ones, which is good if you're uh, doing a broadcast or if you're using it in a place where there's a lot of background noise, you can kind of fight it off by getting right up in there and using it. And they're very rugged, they're very durable, and they can handle a lot of noise, so you can yell into it. A lot of times, uh, if you're a metal singer or if you're uh, using a heavy guitar, a dynamic microphone is going to be used because it can handle that roughness. Now, the last thing I want to get into is a breakdown of a build, and we're actually going to be using a microphone. To be more specific, the ATM4000S, which is a stage mic, dynamic microphone you would see on stage, very similar to a uh, SM48 by Shure, SM58, same thing, just an older brother. Uh, so we're going to break those down and show you some guts. So to start off, we have the body and the capsule. Capsule screws off. Not all microphones have a accessibility like this. Uh, it's made so you can replace the capsule with uh, uh, anything, like the housing for it, the mesh and everything like that. You can replace it very easily. So after we take the head off, you see that the diaphragm is exposed along with the voice coil underneath, inside that black housing, and the, the metal part is the magnet. So you see the diaphragm up here. We're gonna break that apart. We're gonna take this off and expose the voice coil. So that diaphragm is gonna reverberate when you talk into it or whenever you give it sound. Go to the voice coil. Voice coil is gonna start reverberating as well and creating electrical energy from the acoustic energy that you gave it. That magnet will in turn transfer that electrical energy through the wires to your XLR cable, so on and so forth. Now, like I said, these microphones are very simple. There's not much to them. There's three components, diaphragm, voice coil, and a magnet. To go a little bit further, you have the housing. Now in this particular model, you have a on off switch. So the wires don't, don't just go straight to the XLR port, the pegs and the bottom they stop at a relay, which is basically a, like a light switch, turn on and off. When you turn it off, the signal stops. When you turn it on, the signal is allowed to pass through. So the red, hot, yellow, neutral goes down. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but I'll try to light it as best I can. You can see the relay for the on and off switch. 
down to the pegs. The three pegs for the XLR cable have the red, hot, yellow, neutral. There's also a black one for the third one, which is a ground. So the ground is attached to the body, which is made out of metal. So it's a perfect housing to use as a ground. So there you go. There is another five minute Friday about dynamic microphones. I have a five minute Friday coming up about condenser microphones. I'm thinking of picking one up, a cheap one, so I could break it apart and show you guys how it's constructed. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you learned something about dynamic microphones and uh, this was informative. It's nice to know the equipment that you're using, especially um, uh, microphones and how they work and how they're constructed. If you have any questions, comments, anything whatsoever, please leave them down in the comment section down below. If you found this video entertaining, enjoyable, fun, whatever, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more videos that are coming out. If you're enjoying these five minute Fridays, please let me know. I really wanna know if you guys are enjoying them and uh, these short form videos are definitely something I wanna continue because it gets the information out quicker and you guys can learn a little bit more. Until next time, be safe, be kind, please wear a mask if you go out, and I'll see you next time. Cozy. It's very, very nice. We used to love it back in the world. Back when the world was a little bit smaller. No one will ever know that the U-boat ended up in the jungle.